I'm on the final stages of finishing up this Stanley number four Bailey Sweetheart plane. I've already cleaned up the sides, redid the inside. The Japani was almost totally gone. I cleaned up all the brass, all the screws, and everything like that. I tried a apple cider vinegar this time, and it worked okay, but I think the next time I'm going to do it, I'm going to go ahead with the regular white vinegar that you can get at the store. You can find a link to a video where I did a test on that. Here it is with the iron cap on here. The It looks really good. I had to do some detailing right here where the Stanley is because it was pretty rusted and I wasn't sure how well the Stanley would actually read but it ended up turning out quite well so tonight what I'm going to show you guys to do how to do is go ahead and flatten the sole of your plane talk about why it's important where you want to make sure it's the flattest part and just a different technique that I use to flatten my soles okay so the things that you're gonna first off need is some sandpaper, a flat surface. I use just a thing of glass. You can use granite, tile, whatever you want, as long as you know that it is flat. I've got a black marker, a just a steel wire brush, and this will be used just to clean up some of the debris that gets in the sandpaper. And I've got some spray adhesive to attach the sandpaper down to my glass. Uh, another helpful thing you might want is a scraper because after you get done using the paper, it tends to leave the glue residue on there and you can scrape it off very easy with a little scraper. So first and foremost, we'll get started with where you want to have your sole flat. The main areas that you want to have your sole flat is right here at the mouth of your plane. And that is because that's where everything's going to be pushed. That's how you're going to be, your iron's going to pop through, and those shavings are going to be pushed in between the front of your mouth and the iron. So it's very important that it's flat right there. It's also important that you have a flat sole along your two edges. I also like to make sure that the very heel of my plane is flattened and also the toe of the plane. That way you have a completely flat surface. Right in this area, it doesn't matter. I don't believe so because you've got all this other flat area that you're riding on and your main portion where you'll be pushing the wood to the iron is right here in the front. As long as you have the front section, the back, the sides, and this mouth, you should be able to have your hand plane shaving with no problems. So I'm just going to take the spray adhesive and spray it down. And I'll leave where my fingers are alone so that I can go ahead and peel that part up. After I get done with the 150 grit, I'm going to go ahead and switch up to the 500. And that's just to kind of get it a little bit shinier of a, of a surface. Right now, I'm currently just waiting for this to become a little bit tacky. I put quite a bit on. That way, I made sure that it would stick. And if I was doing a joiner plane, I would actually want to make sure that the entire surface is completely flat because you are joining on edges. So you might be riding on a half of an inch or three quarters of an inch. So it's very important for this entire area to be uh, nice and flat on a joiner plane. But just because this is... Maybe a little scrubbing plane, you don't have to worry about it because you won't be on any side edges. So what I'm going to start by doing is just making sure that I'm centered up because this is such a skinny piece of paper that uh, it's almost just as wide as the plane, but that's okay. And I'm just going to go back and forth with it. Alright, so I'm just going to check it real quick just to see what it looks like and most of it's already starting to to come off you can see i still got my marks right here i've got a mark on this side but my mark on this side is gone and the mark on the heel is gone i have a little bit still on the toe so we're just going to keep on working until all those marks are gone so here's the bottom of it you can see it's it's got quite a few pits in it 
But the way I knew that it was completely flat is I drew back on with the Sharpie and I made three passes and along the sides. I had one line along the side, one along that side, and two in the middle. And the entire Sharpie erased on three or four passes. So now we're ready to move up to the next grit. So after I got done with that 500, I went ahead and just wiped it up a little bit. Put some water on a rag and just wiped it down. Now, as you can see, this is very, very pitted. Uh, I guess the rust spots were a little bit deeper than I had originally imagined. So it's still pitted, but all the lines are coming off with the same amount of strokes. So it's all totally flat still. And just to give you a different perspective, here is another number four that I was redoing. And you can see that one is a lot better. You can see there's no pitting in it really. Thanks for joining me on this video. I hope you get the perspective on what you're trying to accomplish with it. With going from just the lower grit to, you don't even have to have a 500, but you can. You want to polish it up you can go up to the thousand two thousand whatever kind of grit you want but it's not necessary if you enjoyed the video go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and make sure you are subscribed to my youtube channel for all sorts of different videos about tools blacksmithing woodworking even a little bit of welding here and there if you have any comments leave them down below if you have any questions leave them down below i don't care what it's about if you just want to ask some random question you go ahead and do so make sure you share the video on all the social networks facebook twitter google those type of things and i will see you guys on the next video